Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. Hello, Northlanders. It's Wednesday, August 30th. I'm White Buckner, the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. It's been more than two years since Ricky Balsimo Jr. was murdered on Father's Day, driven hundreds of miles north, dismembered, and callously tossed in Lake Superior where those responsible believed he'd never be found. The plan likely would have succeeded if not for the persistence of the Balsimo family, who felt shunned by police and spent weeks pursuing their own investigation, ultimately helping bring the offenders to justice. Still, time has done little to heal the trauma, as evidenced by a pair of sentencings Tuesday in State District Court. Two Northland residents who played active roles in covering up the murder after the fact were the first to receive their punishments, ahead of the killer sentencing next month. Robert Thomas West, 43, who reportedly masterminded the dismemberment plot and disposed of the remains in several buckets, was handed a 15-year prison term from Judge Michael Cuzo, who cited the South Range man's, quote, particular cruelty and disregard for life, end quote. Meanwhile, 33-year-old Tommy Lynn Hintz of Duluth, was given five years of probation, which could include jail time, for her role that included commissioning the boat that was used for the disposal. Both West and shooter Jacob Colt Johnson, 37 of Superior, were convicted at separate trials earlier this year, while Hintz was the lone defendant to enter into a pre-trial plea agreement last year. The central facts of the killing and its aftermath were largely undisputed across all three cases. Rather, the key issue was a legal question as to whether Balsimo was shot in self-defense, a claim made by both West and Johnson and rejected by both juries. Defense attorneys pointed to evidence that the victim was impaired by methamphetamine, making threats and waving around a knife at the moment when Johnson fired at least four shots. But prosecutors portrayed Johnson as angry and annoyed with the victim, arguing there was no imminent threat that justified the taking of a life without so much as a warning. In sentencing West, the judge pointed to what he described as a clear lack of remorse. He noted a disturbing statement the defendant made about having a long-established plan for what he would do if he ever needed to get rid of a dead body. At Tuesday's sentencing, the judge said West treated the body like it was garbage. The 15-year sentence was the maximum term that could be sought after West entered a post-conviction agreement to testify in Johnson's trial. Sentencing for Hintz was less dramatic, owing to the fact that her punishment was largely negotiated in advance as she pleaded guilty to aiding an offender. Hintz remained in tears throughout much of Tuesday's hearing and received a measure of compassion from the Bolsimo family, who maintained she should have been hit with stiffer charges, but nonetheless gave her well wishes in the hallway afterward. Cuso, who will retire in October, stayed a four-year prison term in favor of five years of supervised probation. As a condition, he ordered two 90-day jail stints, but said Hintz can argue to have those waived if she demonstrates to another judge that she is maintaining sobriety and a productive lifestyle. The sentencings were the first opportunity for the Balsimo family to directly address the defendants. They will have another opportunity when Johnson appears for sentencing September 11th before Cuso in Grand Marais. While an end to the legal journey appears near, there is still additional business in Douglas County, where Johnson and West both face charges of mutilating a corpse. The Solon Springs School District has another school forest. At its July 17th meeting, the Solon Springs School Board accepted a donation of 11.25 acres of forest land from Richard Flint for educational purposes. The parcel had been enrolled under the Managed Forest Law Program, according to Matt Blaylock, with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry, but Flint really wanted to leave it to a school. He and his late wife, Carol, began communicating with the school district last year about donating the land. 
Flint, 88, was born and raised in Duluth, according to an interview Flint participated in with the University of Minnesota Duluth. He attended UMD for his undergraduate degree and went on to attend Northwestern University for law school. Upon graduating from law school, he moved back to Minnesota and practiced law in the Twin Cities. Flint purchased the Douglas County land in 1958 and planted many of the red pine trees on the property by hand, according to Blaylock. The district also has an 80-acre industrial school for south of the school on U.S. Highway 53, according to Environmental Education Coordinator Julie Fromm. The two parcels are roughly the same distance from the school, but the new donation offers a quieter, more remote spot where students can enjoy the forest. The initiative was set up as a memorial in memory of the Flint's son, Thomas, who died in a motorcycle accident in 1990. Former Hermantown High School defenseman Bo Janzig recently announced his intention to play NCAA Division I college hockey at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Janzig is on the 2023-2024 roster of the United States Hockey League's Sioux Falls Stampede after the South Dakota club took him with a 7th round selection in the USHL Phase 2 draft in June. Janzig scored 29 points in 2021-2022, his last for Hermantown in the Hawks' run to the Class A state championship. Janzig had an assist in the championship game the Hawks won 3-2 over Warroad. Last season, Janzig scored 5 goals and had 18 assists in 58 games for the Minnesota Wilderness in Cloquet. The Wilderness are a Tier 2 junior hockey team playing in the North American Hockey League. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought to you by the Superior Telegram's history podcast, Archive Dive. This weather forecast for the Duluth Harbor area, patchy early morning fog giving way to a mostly sunny sky, light winds with a high temperature in the lower to middle 70s, clear and cool tonight with temps dropping down to around 50 degrees, increasing clouds and a bit breezier tomorrow with Thursday's high likely reaching into the upper 70s to the lower 80s away from the lake. There'll be a slight chance of thunder showers, very low probability Thursday night, and then we're headed for some warm weather this weekend with highs in the 80s to near 90. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to Archive Dive for their support. The monthly history podcast, hosted by Superior Telegram reporter Maria Lockwood, dips into the archives of historic events, people, and places around Superior and Douglas County, available at superiortelegram.com or where we also get this podcast. This month's episode is part one of a two-part series looking back at the life of the legendary Bud Grant. Reporting for today's episode was done by Tom Olson, Maria Lockwood, and Jamie Malcolm. Thank you for listening to the Lewis News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.